All right, what's up, everybody? <laughs> what's up, Linus? What's up, everybody? Adam Serpinski here. And before we get started, I want to give a warning to my subscribers. This will not be a music video. It will not even be me talking about music. This is a programming slash tech video. Um, so if that does sound interesting to you, please keep watching. Um, if that sounds totally boring, I will have a link right here to one of my um, music videos. Go, go do that instead. Um, so that being said, what I want to talk about here is this page on my website and how it works. So what we've got here is uh, an assortment of my YouTube videos and my SoundCloud songs. Um, so if we click here on Mad Bombs, this is uh, a video game that I wrote the music for. We've got the SoundCloud link there um, and some, some other content that's similar. And then if we go to this one right here, we've got a YouTube video. We've got the title, the composer, the instruments I played on it, and some body text. Um, and we can filter these posts by the instruments that I played, uh, which, is, which is kind of fun. Um, and so at any rate, um, let's go to the code and kind of look at what it is from my perspective as uh, the person using this website. So basically, I've got this directory here full of markdown files, and then in practice, you know, I copy paste the last one I wrote and modify it with some new content, you know, replace the title, replace the composer, and so forth. Um, and so, kind of the point here is that this isn't a database backed website. There's no Postgres, there's no MySQL, so it's not what you would usually find um, which would be you know a WordPress site or a Ruby on Rails site or an Elixir Phoenix site. So it's not that, but it's also not a static site um, like like you would get with Jekyll or or you know something like that. So um, it's sort of this gray area in between and I got this idea from Jose Valim who wrote the Elixir programming language of this site that's that has some of the benefits of a static site and some of the benefits of a database backed website. Um, and so basically what happens is when this app starts up, I walk through this, this directory of markdown files and I parse what each one into memory. So let's kind of look at that for a second. Um, so basically, if you want to know how any Go, uh, any program written in the Go programming language works, you want to find um, the main package and then inside of it the main function. Uh, and basically here we initialize a repository passing in a file path. And we take that file path, we walk through it, um, we iterate through all the files in that directory, and for each one, we parse the file. And I don't wanna to go too deep in the weeds of like file parsing, but the short way to explain it would be to say that I really enjoyed this book, uh, Thorsten Ball, Writing an Interpreter in Go, and I basically like did something like what this book describes to go character by character through the file, um, parse, parse everything into a typed struct, which is blog. Nope, it is post. Um, so basically I, I parse what I've got into this data structure that has a YouTube link and a title and a date and so forth. Um, and the advantage of, of doing all this is that number one, it's way faster than making a round trip to a database. So like if you wanted to make a database-backed website fast, you would cache all the content into memory and serve it from there. And basically, that's that's the old, that's like my default status: is everything is already cached into memory as soon as the app spins up. Um, so it's it's very fast compared to a database-backed website, um, and it also allows me um, to avoid having a, an administrator login where you know, that could be vulnerable to, uh, you know, security breaches and so forth. And I don't have to worry about that at all. I'm basically delegating security to GitHub because as soon as I commit, um, I, I add a new file, I commit it, I push it to GitHub, and then that runs my unit test, it builds the Docker container and it pushes it to my hosting provider. And I have confidence that GitHub has better security engineers than me. <laughs> and so um, it's it's more secure, it's faster on the performance side. I can still do programming things that you couldn't do with a static with a static site, like um, you can filter my my posts by what instrument I play. You know, that would be impossible to do with a static uh, site generator. Um, and then furthermore, if you look at my GoMod file, 
you will find an embarrassingly outdated version of Go. Uh, 1.15 was probably the version that we were using when I started this. Um, I should update it to 2 plus and play around with some of those features. But um, there's no dependencies of any kind. There's no JavaScript at all on this, on this website. There is no library of any kind. So I'm not using a routing library. I'm not using a rendering library, nothing. It's all, it's all just um, code that I've written and, and that's it. Um, and so that kind of allows me to just focus on the parts of building the site that are fun to me, which is programming, and avoid um, the parts that are not fun, which is dependency hell. So I have never had to waste time updating my Node version. I've never had to waste time, you know, um, updating my Ecto library and like kind of these dependencies of the Phoenix framework, which the website before this one was it was Phoenix. Um, and so I, I've had a lot of fun this investment has really paid off in that I've, this this Go website has been going for years now and it's been nothing but fun to work with. So I hope you find this interesting. And the point I really want to get across is that when you're building a website like this with a finite amount of content, the database doesn't necessarily have to be Postgres or MySQL. It could be a folder full of markdown files or it could be a folder full of JSON. Like quick tangent, um, if you look at my calendar, Sadly, I have no gigs coming up, but I did have some gigs in the past, and uh, I'm having trouble tabbing over to the code, uh, events. So I store my events just as JSON. So like I'm, I'm just writing uh, raw JSON. That's the very easiest thing for me to do. Um, and then, you know, that gets parsed the same way when the app starts up. Um, and so... And so for me, this is an easy, simple way of adding an event to my calendar. I just add another uh, item to my array of events using JSON, and, and that's it. I commit it, uh, push to GitHub, and it's live you know, within a minute. So if this is your first time to my channel, I might hold off on subscribing because I do not have any other tech content on this channel and I probably won't have much of it in the future. Um, this is a music channel. You will find music videos. You will find me sharing my thoughts on music. Uh, but if that sounds interesting, you should subscribe. And in either case, you should hit the thumbs up button to uh, help me out. And uh, maybe I'll catch you again. Thanks.